Welcome to another episode of your favorite libertarian. Today, we are going to be installing the Tuffy Security Products Deck Enclosure for a four-door subwoofered Wrangler Rubicon. These are the tools that you'll need. The first two, starting left to right, you'll need if everything goes according to plan. But if you need to bend anything or pry anything, you'll need a flathead screwdriver. And if you need to bend any pieces that are bigger, you'll want that wrench to the right. Let's see what's in the box. So far it looks pretty well packaged. We've got brackets, no wrap. Looks like this is some type of rubber seal or something, which is good. This appears to just be one giant empty box, but let's double check. Giant empty box. Feel pretty good about that. Got a panel here. Checking for scratches because I've heard reviews that this one came all scratched up for a couple of people who bought it. So far, this looks okay. Piece of cardboard. We're gonna save this. We're gonna set this down over here. We have plenty of places to lay out all of the metal so we're not putting it on concrete when we're working on it. Got another piece here. This it's got some nice rubber around it. That's nice to see. This appears to be a scratch. Very surface level though. I don't know if you guys can see that. Not horrible. Leather stripping. I'm guessing this is going to go on the lid where it meets the tailgate. It's actually got a hard plastic on the inside of it, which is nice. So it should be nice and rigid. Bubble wrap. Something for the kids. This piece is going to go around our subwoofer. We set that aside on the bubble wrap. Nice. More bubble wrap here. Like we have our owner's manual, an instruction assembly guide, installation instructions, warranty. And here's something I found when I picked this up, which I believe this is the lid, that I don't understand at all. And I'll show you this in a second. 
So this resting on the bottom is the lid. Underneath the lid is this. This is what attaches to the lid so that when you pick it up, it'll lock in place so you can do whatever you need to do, get stuff in and out. This was just underneath this piece of metal and it could slide all around. When I picked up the box, I could feel something sliding around. This was it. For the life of me, I don't understand why this is loosely in there, not wrapped in bubble wrap. So we'll see what the other side of this looks like because instead of putting it on the inside like this and it slide around and scratch up the inside of the metal and the paint, which is on the other side, which is the side everyone sees. So let's see what that looks like. I can't tell if this is just from cardboard or if this is from that piece of metal. I think it's okay, but I'm amazed that this did not scratch all this up. So you got lucky if you order this and it's not all scratched up from the way they package it. Everything else was packaged really nice, so I don't understand why this is just able to freely s scratch around on here. It's a miracle that this is okay. Moving on. Okay, so since I have a best top, soft top, ultra top, I think is what it's called, I need to remove this back panel and the side panels. I don't really need to, but I probably will need to, and it'll just make it a lot easier to install what's going to be in here and you'll be able to see a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and take these panels off. have a nice big open space to play with. Let's get started. So we're gonna start with the left panel and this is gonna be the side that does not have the subwoofer. We need a few things. We need the panel itself. We need this bracket, the one without the hole in it, on the little tiny hole on the side. If you look, there's two different ones. There's one with the hole in it, one without. You can also see the bottom part is longer on the left hand side panel bracket. We have this, uh, that's the biggest piece, and then we have a spacer that we're going to need, and this long screw, these are gonna go into the ground or the floor of the Jeep. And we also have these parts here. So we have the wing nut, we have a washer, and then we have a screw that has no uh, no indentations here, it's nice and smooth. It has a square base so that it will go into that rectangular opening and lock in place so that we can just screw this in with our hand strength. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is line up where that hole is in the actual panel and then you'll find your D-ring tie down ring You'll flip it back, pop this plastic open, and unscrew this screw here. And this will all go away somewhere for sentimental purposes. <laughs> and then we're going to take this piece here, and we're going to take this bracket. We're going to put it underneath this indentation here, this cutout. And then on the backhand side, we're going to take this guy, 
feed it through the bracket and the rectangular opening here. Then we're going to take our washer. Let me make sure that's right. The washer. Yep, we're going to take the washer. And then we're going to take our wing nut and we're going to thread it on here. Now, you're going to want to get this kind of hand tight, but then you'll loosen it a little bit once you install this, uh, this bottom piece of the bracket because in later steps, you're going to need to be able to move this around to get other things on and, and screwed on, so you want this to be a little loose. So that's good. We have that on there correctly. I think this is probably the third time I put this on. So I'm pretty sure I have it right this time. All right, so the spacer. I'm gonna take the spacer and we're gonna put it underneath here and line it up with that hole that was originally there. I'm gonna take this long screw and feed it through the spacer and through the threaded part that's in the Jeep already. And if you're doing it right, you should be able to hand tighten it almost all the way. And then you'll just take your hex tool or bit, whatever you have, tighten it the rest of the way. I'm just gonna get it kind of snug because I don't know if I'm gonna need to do anything, move it around later. This piece is already a little loose, so I can move things around, but just to be on the safe side, I'm not gonna tighten this down all the way just yet. So it's nice and flush here. Now another thing you can do, which I'm not gonna do, but I'll show you how to do it, is you can attach this rod. Now this arm, we'll call it an arm, this arm is what goes into, it kind of attaches right here to this hole. You can have it lay down here when you're not using it, and then when you are using it, it goes up and this attaches to the door or the lid, I should say. It lets you have it up like this, keep it open so you can get to stuff and make it all convenient. For me, I have a soft top. And what that means for people who just have hard tops or maybe don't, don't have the system yet for their soft top is that right now in this configuration, I have the panels off. So I have these two panels off and then I have obviously where I'm sitting right now, this rear panel off with them off. So in the summertime, if I want to have them off and just have this be kind of like a uh, Sun Rider, if you will, I can open this lid all the way if I want, and I could use that arm. But for me going into fall and winter, I'm not going to be opening this at all because I'm going to have my panels on. And the only way I'm going to be accessing anything in here is by opening the tailgate and getting my hands in there. So if I were to install this, I'd probably put some rubber here, some type of uh, weatherproofing strips over this just so it's not rattling around. There is a nylon washer that's included to help mitigate that, but I think it would have been super cheap and it would have been a nice touch for them to include that. But uh, what are you going to do? There's been some other complaints about that too and it rattling. So something you might want to think about if you get this particular model. So as far as how it attaches, you have this screw and this one is the only one that's in the kit. So pretty e easy to distinguish it from the other screws. It has a hex pattern on top. You'll also need the nut, uh, a nylon washer, and this metal washer, and this metal washer is the smallest of all the metal washers, so that helps you distinguish it as well. So imagine my finger is the panel itself. So what you're going to want to do is put it through, put it through this hole. You're going to put. <laughs> so again, my finger is the metal. You'll put this through. You have the nylon washer on, and then you'll put all that through the hole for the panel itself. And then on the other side, you're gonna put the uh, small metal washer and then the nut itself. And that's how you attach that. So once that's all installed, it'll look like this and you'll be able to 
put it up and down and it'll just rest on that wing nut when it's not in use. But for me, I'm not gonna use it, so we don't really need to go through that step. All right, so now that that's all installed, we're gonna go ahead and go over to the right-hand side, which is going to be the side that you have your, subwoof <laughs> your subwoofer on. If you have a subwoofer, if not, it's just gonna be the right panel. Here we go. Come on. There we go. Proofing, we're going to install the bracket onto the panel and just as a reminder that little hole and this bottom piece being shorter indicates that this is for the right hand side so we're going to take this piece we're going to put it on the back end slide it through this little whoop, whoop, slide it through that little cutout and then we're going to take our squared off base screw with the round backing. We're going to put that on the back side through the bracket and the rectangular opening. And then we're going to take, <laughs> not that, uh, we're going to take one of these washers, slide that on, and then another one of the provided wing nuts and thread that on. And same thing for this side, we're gonna wanna get it a little tight just to get it in place. But ultimately, we want to loosen it a little bit because we're gonna need to have wiggle room on this side for further steps in the process. So wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Now, one thing you'll notice in my particular kit is I have the spacer, but I don't have the other screw. That long screw that I did on the left-hand side is not included for whatever reason. I don't think it's supposed to be not included, so I'm going to contact the manufacturer, which is uh, Secure... Uh, sorry, Tuffy Security. I don't know why I forgot that. It's been a long install so far. This is not my first take. And I'm gonna ask for them to send me one of those. But once I do, it'll be the same process on this side. Put the spacer underneath. Line it up. Put this in here. And line it up with that hole. So, yeah, right about there. And then that'll go right. And then you'll screw that down and you'll be done with this side for now. Now we're going to install what they call the front panel, which is the last panel you'll need to install before you install the lid. So the instructions say to put this in front of the lips, and I'll show you what I mean. So on the back of where, I guess, where the 
side panels are going to meet the front panel. There's this lip right here. And it looks like for both sides, you're going to take this piece here. So this is going to stay on top and it's going to go forward. And then you're going to put this up against here on both sides. And then you're going to put the same type of setup as the other spot. So you're going to have for each of these holes, which it looks like there's two on this side, two on that side. You're going to do the same process of these three. So you're going to start with this on the side that you can't get to with your hands easily. Then on the inside, you're going to put this over once you get this piece through the actual holes and the panel. And then you'll put this on top. And what's nice about the way that they've designed this, which I, I actually do like this, is that these are, real, you can just hand loosen and tighten these. So if you want to take these panels off, it's not super difficult to do once you understand how to put it together in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead and install these and we'll see if I did it right. <laughs> All right, so now we have one, two, three, four of these guys, these three pieces of hardware installed into this back piece. Uh, this, well, I guess technically it's the front panel. Now the next thing we're gonna need to do is install the lid. All right, so fast forward to me having the lid on my battery died once I put the seats down so uh, there's two there's two spots on each side of the panel that you have to put these let's see if you can see them uh, so on the other side of these nuts there are nylon rollers and there's channels so you have to get it in this channel here on both sides and this channel here on both sides. So for me, what I did is I started on the back. I let these sit like they're sitting now, uh, not in the holes. I fed those through, pushed them in, and then once those were in, I came over here to the front. I guess actually technically the, the rear. And I put these in. I did have to do some adjusting, and the adjusting that I did was mostly uh, down down here on this side and in the same place on the other side, just loosening those, moving this panel a little bit, just so that this would get nice and uh, even. The other thing that I noticed was right here, this was either returned by someone and they got really frustrated and they bent it up or it was bent up already from shipping, whatever it was, this was bent way up. So on this side, I couldn't get this to close all the way like I can now because this was higher. So this was just not going as far down. So I bent this back where it should be. And now I can push this in all the way. And now this is flush this and I can have this closed all the way so here's what it looks like all installed and then I can pull this forward bring it up and then if I had that thing to hold it up I could hold it up but that's what it looks like inside you're really not losing much cargo space at all. There's a little tiny bit of room over on that side. Uh, this side, there's a, not really any room at all that you're missing. And for me, I wanted to be able to fold down my soft top. 
I have this closed. So, all right, now let's see how this works with the soft top. The reason I went with this one over some of the other ones that were, uh, it wasn't really a price thing. This one was less expensive, which was nice, but it still has the cutout areas on each side for the soft top to go in. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this soft top back. Yeah, it's looking good. So if you have a soft top, and you want to be able to have the top all the way down, I think this is a really good option. It's not interfering at all because it's not covering all of this side space on each side like some of the other ones, like I think the diabolical one, it goes across the whole thing, which is fine if you have a hard top and you're gonna take your hard top completely off and you just want this to cover all of that area. That's great, but for me, I wanted to have some security in the back and I also wanted to have the ability to still use my soft top like I would normally use my soft top. Well, that's gonna be it for the installation of the Tuffy Security Deck Enclosure for the four-door Wrangler subwoofer option. If you like this video and found it informative, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more videos. Let me know of any other mods you'd like to see on Dangerous Freedom. And as always, Thank you.